Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of a Leo, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the months of May. I hope you are well. I'm using the Night Sun Tarot for you today. Uh, right, I have a few things to tell you. If the reading resonates and you would like to go a little bit deeper at the end, there will be a link to an extended that you can access that will be down in the description box. Obviously, if you are a member of my Patreon, you get access to all of that extended stuff for no extra cost. Um, the other thing is that there are scammers operating in the comments. Uh, do be aware, um, they're not particularly uh, <coughs> good at pretending to be me, um, but just be aware, like Scorched Earth Tarot has a, a lozenge around it and I think you all know I don't use an excessive emoji, so if you see that, just ignore it, don't pay attention to it. I'm deleting them as fast as I can, but I spent 40 minutes this morning doing it, I spent 40 minutes yesterday doing it, and, you know, as, as quickly as I am finding them, and I'm having to scroll through a lot of comments to find them, they're reappearing again, so <clears throat> ignore them, don't give them the benefit of your attention, they will soon move on. Uh, the other thing is, so, uh, as you know, like, I use my little coins to, to decide who goes next when I'm doing the readings. And Leo actually was, like, the second or third coin out. And I tried and failed repeatedly to get a reading together for Leo. I was six or seven failed attempts before I finally gave up and did something else. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't happen very often. But when it does, it's usually because the energy isn't quite yet. Um, that's the best way to put it. Uh, I, and when that happened, I knew that Leo was going to end up being last. So apologies the, for the fact that the uh, the reading is late. I am aware that they're late. Um, thank you so much for waiting for me. But it feels like there's some sort of shift that had to happen in the intervening period before, you know, something coherent could come together. So I'm quite intrigued to see what this month holds for us really I guess right let's get three cards for Leo please there we go the first one is the ten of pentacles that's in your recent past current energy for Leo please thank you we have the hermit <clears throat> and what's coming towards Leo for May we have the moon and the nine of pentacles that's very interesting so we have the two of swords at the bottom of the deck and you know that's I think you're on the edge of a really quite spectacular breakthrough in some in some way, Leo. Because you've got the two of swords at the bottom of the deck here. Now that, to me, is a card of, of sometimes willful ignorance, right? It is that which we do not see because we choose not to see it. And it's not our conscious mind that chooses not to see it. It's our subconscious mind. And so we're talking about, uh, you know, self-sabotage behaviours and things like that. But... Underneath there, we have the world and we have the temperance card. Now, for you to reach the world, which is a state of achievement, right? It, it suggests to me that this next wee period of time, you know, and we are in Mercury retrograde and uh, we do have this really epic eclipse season going on right now. What is going to be revealed to you over the course of this month is, is something that leads to a spectacular breakthrough for you because we have completion. We have something ending. We have also, you know, healing implied by that. But actually, the way that this little angel here is peeking out behind the world card, it makes me feel that actually you are being guided toward something. And it's something big. Now, <clears throat> let me put those to the side for a second. And grab ourselves a clarifying deck. Give it a shuffle. See if we can put some meat on these bones. So, tell me about this Ten of Pentacles, please. Thank you. We all knew that. Was, I was waiting for that. We've got the Tower card. <clears throat> Ten of Pentacles. Two of Swords. Tell me about this Hermit, please. Why is the Hermit here? We have the Seven of Wands in reverse and the Six of Wands in the upright. And the moon and the nine of pentacles. We have oh, the seven of swords in reverse. We have the five of swords in reverse. And whatever the fuck that was, the page of wands there. Now, <clears throat> 
The Eight of Wands, sometimes communication, sometimes momentum building, but this is a sense of something really coming into land with you. Hmm. Something coming into land with you pretty, pretty soon, Leo. And we've got the Ace of Wands behind that. We've also got the Empress behind that too, you know, and that we, we have just had that solar eclipse in Taurus, right? For me, the Empress is a Taurus card. So it feels like there is something that was set in motion around about the time of the solar eclipse. God, when was that? I want to say it was around April 30th, but you might want to check just to be on the safe side. Um, <clears throat> But the thing is, with the moon card being here, I feel for most of you, you actually have no idea what this refers to at all, right? It's obscured in some way. It's not ready quite yet to be revealed to you. Now, when is the full moon? The one full moon is going to be on the 16th, 16th of May, I think. And I think this is where you can expect the breakthrough to come through, right? It's, it's a big full moon. It's a full moon in Scorpio. It's also got a, a lunar eclipse attached to it. This feels to me, it's when everything lands, when everything makes sense. And we've got some sort of uh, <clears throat> reignition, uh, reignition, reignition, reignition of um, energy, but also creative potential that you can tap into. It's... <sighs> It involves a release of something, right? Well, there's always, you know, a trade-off with these things. Something needs to be released. Something needs to be let go. But it feels like that process has already been set in motion for you. You know, in your recent past, we've got the Ten of Pentacles here. Now, uh, it, it means all sorts of things. It can be the Happy Family card. You know, it can be uh, <clears throat> businesses. It can be any kind of you know, solid institution, something that requires a lot of investment into it to to get it to a point of culmination because it is a 10, right? And we've got more kind of cards of endings going on here. <clears throat> but the investment doesn't need to be financial. It's an energetic investment of some description. So your time, your care, your effort, your money, your love, all of that kind of thing, right? We've got the Tower card and the Two of Swords clarifying this. Now, I'm not surprised that the Two of Swords is here. But I'm somewhat surprised to see it with the tower. Because, <sighs> because it's quite difficult not to notice a tower falling down. Yeah, that is a tower card. Thank you. Ooh. We've got the Hierophant and we've got the Six of Pentacles. We've got the Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck now. So there is that past energy of the Six of Cups. It's also Scorpio energy, you know, and everything that we just talked about, about Mercury retrograde and, you know, the eclipse and the, the, yeah, the lunar eclipse and the full moon would all speak to this card being here because something is being released, <laughs> something is being released, something is being let go. I'm smiling because what we've got underneath the Six of Cups is the Ace of Wands and the Six of Wands. It's almost like whatever it is that you can release here is replaced with something much, much more in alignment with you, right? This is a Leo card in and of itself, the Six of Wands. It speaks about conspicuous success, right? <clears throat> and if we're talking about breakthroughs and whatnot, then, you know, no, I'm not surprised to see that here. But this Ace of Wands, I, I love, I love this one in particular because it does have a phoenix on it, right? The card that was beneath all of those was the Ten of Swords. But, you know, as we know from the Tarot of the Abyss, there are two versions of the Ten of Swords in here, actually two Three of Swords as well. And this is the one that is from a different perspective. This is looking one's challenges, you know, uh, and, and I would say that it being these historical challenges like directly in the eye, knowing that they have been in some way a gift, they have in some way taught to you something that is very valuable and is going to help you, like a phoenix, be reborn from the ashes of whatever was. Now, <clears throat> we have the Hierophant coming up underneath this tower, and the Hierophant is a similar... It's got a similar sort of energy to it, to the Ten of Pentacles. 
because it's about those things that are established. And I, th I feel like this is a highly personal internal journey, Leo. It doesn't feel like, you know, tower stuff happening, you know, right, left and centre in front of you. Like the world is not blowing up in front of you. You know, your pipes aren't bursting and, and all that sort of thing. Like, this is something that is, is much more powerful going on in here because the tower is, is the blowing up. Right? It's not just putting swords down, those two of swords, just going, all right, okay, let me look at this thing. It's like literally firing a fucking grenade at it from about half a mile away. And going, <clears throat> show me the thing, I'm going to see the thing now. You know, the, the, there's nothing subtle about this energy here, Leo. It feels like, for some of you, under the guidance of a teacher, what we have going on here is, is a blowing off of a previous version of you. And we know what that's like, right? We've been doing that for a while. But I think we've been doing it in a much smaller way than it appears to be occurring now. But the fact that it's here in your recent past, I feel like it's already in motion. I think it's just one of those things, you know, how sound and, and light travel at different speeds, right? So you'll see the, the, the flash of the starting gun, but it'll take like two seconds for the sound to actually hit you. It feels like you've seen the flash of the tower, but the noise of this, um, this you know, huge edifice kind of crumbling down has not yet rolled across the valley and hit your ears. <clears throat> and to be quite honest, it doesn't really matter. I feel like there were points of you where you would be looking for this noise. You would be searching for it. You'd be looking for evidence of it happening. And there's something very calm and consistent about your energy now. Are you quite happy to blow things up and trust that they're blowing up and trust that it's right? And not really think that much more about it, you know, because you are headed forwards. Oh, in some ways you're actually headed inwards because the next set of cards that you've got are the Hermit, and it's Virgo energy, right? And this seven and six of, of wands appearing here. Right? So here's a second occurrence of the six of wands, a second occurrence of conspicuous success at something, right? This is not somebody just going, yes. I beat that level on what whatever game I've been playing, and that's really good, like a little quiet achievement to oneself. This feels like it is being seen by other people and possibly being perceived more by other people than by you at this point. <clears throat> but you've stopped fighting something. You know, all of the readings this month have kind of revolved around this notion of, of, of um, obstacles and blockages being illuminated so that we can kind of pull them out of the way or like get them out of the way this seems to me to be saying that quite a lot of this is already is work that you have already done and where there is a tendency towards self-sabotage i mean some of you seem to be taking it in hand and like you know the meaning of the hierophant is the teacher in a, in, in you know in quite a lot of ways actually <clears throat> it's Taurus energy of being taught something you know we've got information being disseminated from somebody who is at the top of a hierarchy of things like to 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 lower people right lower people but you know what I mean people who are less experienced there is uh it's called the acolyte card it's one of the acolyte cards in the uh, in the tarot and it, it's the passing on of knowledge from from an older more experienced soul to another one and it feels like it's all just kind of bedding down in you here the funny thing is this feels really huge leo but it's quite understated which i find really really intriguing you know <clears throat> you're not feeling defensive you're not you're not jumping on anything it's just kind of it's like there's there's no one who's able to get at you at this point because you're just pottering along being being Leo, you know, this, good Lord, there's a certain amount of introspection that's going on at the moment. And I think that you are, you're very comfortably looking at subjects which in the past would have caused you some pain, but now you're just kind of looking at them going, right, oh, what do I need to know? What do I need to learn? 
from all of this. You know, usually with, with Leo readings, you know, we expect the fireworks and, and somewhat of the drama, but this isn't like that. This is very subtle. So it's going on underneath, you know. It's very internal. But it does seem to be that it's being perceived by other people. Now, when we come into your current into what is coming towards you in May, we've got we've got the moon and we've got the nine of pentacles, which is a strange pairing. The moon talks about the things that are hidden. For me, I tend to read it as the subconscious, right? And certainly, as we've been talking about possibilities for self-sabotage and possibilities for keeping ourselves restricted, the moon would certainly speak to that in some sort of way. It would have us, you know, digging around and looking for exactly those things, or at least highlighting to us that there is work to be done there. And we have the Nine of Pentacles, which is about resource management as far as I'm concerned. In the same way as the Ten of Pentacles can be, your time, your care, your effort, your money, your love, all of those things, right? This is about your personal, you as a Leo, not you and your collective, you and your tribe, you and your friends, you and your family, right? <clears throat> or even you and your business, you know? It's about you as an individual. What is it that you are not seeing that is going to be revealed to you? about your energy levels this month, right? Where you are putting your money, where you're putting your time, where you're putting your love, right? <clears throat> because underneath here, we've got the Seven of Swords and the Five of Swords, both in the reverse, which is good. That's actually how, where we want to see them. And we've also got the Page of Wands, right? These same themes of release are coming through here for you, as have come through for every other sign. But there's something much more studious about the way that you are going about it, Leo. And possibly it's because like, 2021 was an absolute shit show for Leos. You know, I think we were all kind of <sighs> drawn into this false sense of security because 2020 was actually kind of good to Leos. Like, it, it wasn't awful. It didn't kick the shit out of us like it did some of the other signs. And thank heaven, because the three years before that were, you know, complete fuckery. So it kind of came into 2021 being all like, yeah, this is good. You know, we're on the up now. And then, you know, huge fucking karmic lessons right, left and center. You know, loss of faith, loss of hope almost in some ways. And then the slow, careful crawling out of the hole on your fucking belly, you know, commando style. Just weird. keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going before popping out at the top. And like I said, for a lot of us, that kind of went into... 2022 too <clears throat> but something about this experience that we had and I do feel like it's intrinsically linked to 2021 and what we learned there has put us in a really good position to be able to take on this work whatever we're doing right now right however this is resonating to you whatever aspect of your life you are kind of digging into at this point because the Seven of Swords and the Five of Swords are both talking about the ways that we are refusing to deceive ourselves anymore. Like these mental gymnastics that we perform, that sometimes we've tried to call faith and it's not. It's escapism of sorts. Are at an end. We're not doing that anymore. You know, Faith is something entirely different to just blind hope that everything's going to be okay. It's a different kind of energy, and I feel like that's what we've been taught. But there's a little bit more to be done, and there's a little bit more, it would seem to me, that is going to be illuminated for you under the full moon. Because we've got this page of wands here, right? carrying this theme of the wands through what is going on here. This is a new direction for you, right? and possibly a new creative project of some description. It's almost like... <clears throat> So sometimes heard readers say, you know, like if you if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? And that always makes me just kind of sit up a little bit because I'm like, well, if you don't fail, how do you learn anything? You know, I always say to the fighters in the gym, you know, you learn more from a loss than a win. So count up your losses, Leo. Like there've been a few over the last, say four years right maybe five maybe six maybe a little bit longer you know each one of these experiences has taught you something really really valuable that you are being asked to bring with you, you know, into whatever new thing it is that is on the horizon for you but there is still more that can be left behind so it's like 
it's not exactly if you couldn't lose, what would you do? It's be prepared that you may lose, be prepared that you may fail, and do it anyway, because it's required, it's being asked of you, you know? <clears throat> The Lover's card appearing here, conscious co-creation with the Knight of Wands, Sagittarius energy, right. and the star. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that was here. I was just why I was slightly confused while I was looking at the cards that just came out because I was like, I'm sure the Justice card is going to come out. I kind of felt it. And there it is. It's right at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> it's not being. It's not needing to be assured of success. It's about going the right way because you're being called to do so, right? There are a couple of things that just need to be kind of sorted out. A few little niggles, actually, here in what's coming towards you in May. I would, I would pay attention to practical things, right? Make sure all of your, you know, direct debits and all that sort of thing, that you're not paying for things that you're not using. But it feels like it's more energetic than just your money. You know, it's like, what is taking up your time and attention? Should it be? Are there better places that you could put that right now? You know, is one of the better places on you? Like, are you having enough quiet time? Are you having enough time to recharge away from people? You know, are you having enough time to think? Are you having enough time to explore yourself? These things do feel to me like they are very important for you, particularly on the run up to the full moon. Now, if you, you know, if, if you're that way inclined and you do moon rituals, it might be worth putting some plans together now for the build up to the full moon. Because there's something that requires you to be entirely present so that you can see the signs and you can see the synchronicities as they are occurring, right? With no no amount of anything over the top, right? No, no thinking, no, no overthinking, you know, no expectations, actually. It's just present. I am here and I am doing this thing. You know, we go from the page of wands to the, the knight of wands here. There is movement, there is progression. But there's a sense of you being kind of pulled into something much, much bigger than you. We've got the justice card at the bottom of the deck here, right? And then we've got the lover's card and the star flanking this Knight of Wands there, that, that Sagittarius card, right? That is conscious co-creation. That is manifestation. That is getting into the slipstream, the energetic slipstream. This is being present enough to do it. And this is shooting towards your goal, right? And we're going to get into this a little bit more in the Vimeo and find out what this is all about. But the star and the justice card together here, you know, and the consent to do it, which is in the lover's card here. <coughs> seems to be pushing you towards something that is coming for you that as yet is not not showing itself maybe there's a little bit of work to do before it appears but it's very very close it's very close and i think some of you might have felt this change coming in on the wind it's really funny to me that i couldn't do this reading when i wanted to do it like something had to change, something had to shift first. And it feels like it, there's just been another revolution of the wheel, right? And that's just brought us that little bit closer to it. And now we are in a position where we can pay attention to what is required from us. You know, there is a... Wow. It's got a very high-pitched ringing in my ear there. We're looking to balance... We're looking to stability, but it absolutely must be an internal stability. It's nothing to do with outside of you. And it's making sure that you are on every level being completely honest with yourself before you move forwards, right? There's a real know thyself kind of energy going on here. But pay attention. Pay attention to people that drain your energy and swerve away from those a little bit. Pay attention to what it is that you are paying attention to and make sure that all your priorities are in exactly the right place because I feel when this star and this this justice card come together for you that there won't be a lot of room, there won't be a lot of time for you to 
sit and contemplate your navel about what you're doing with it, right? That knight of wands energy is asking you to be ready to move at any given moment, you know? And to do that, you've got to make sure that you've got all the groundwork done first, right? Get yourself in a nice, easy position <clears throat> where you're not having to worry about anything else, right? Make sure that your attention is where it is supposed to be. And get ready, I think. Feels big. Feels bigly. I mean, I said, we're going to go over to Vimeo now. And we're going to pull this apart a little bit more and see if we can't get somewhat of an insight into what this is. But it feels like you're about ready to be sucked into something and, you know, possibly strapped to a rocket and fired straight up, you know, in whatever way that, that resonates with you. Ah, okay. So if you'd like to join me over there, link is in the description box. If not, not to worry. That's not a problem. Obviously, if you're one of my patrons, you'll have probably watched this already, so that's all good. Um, but yeah. Find some quiet time, Leo. Right? By yourself. And just let your mind wander. And uh, because all the answers are in there might be a slightly surreal month in some ways i think okay right <clears throat> i'm gonna go know that i love you all very very much and i will see you soon